Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. This is going to be part two of the Colaro record changer service. And I've got the camera propped up best possible. I don't know how well this is going to work. I don't know if it's going to fly apart. Uh, so we'll see as the movie progresses. Anyway, in the last video you saw uh, us take apart the motor bearing, free it up, and validate that we had a good motor. So now that that's the case, and we can validate that the motor still spins freely, then we can focus on dealing with the aspects of the cycling mechanism. And <clears throat> there are a couple of key points. Let me flip this over here. Uh, number one is the speed selector mechanism here. This always freezes up. The cam itself is moving, but the thing that raises and lowers the idler wheel on the shaft here is what gets stuck. So I can kind of sort of work it and the cam turns, but this doesn't move, so we need to fix that bearing there. Uh, the other thing up importance, let's try to rotate this so you guys can see it. Is this cycling wheel here? This needs to get cleaned and lubricated here. You need to check and see if this thing is free moving here. Oftentimes it's not. This one doesn't look like it is, so we need to clean and lube that. Um, make sure that this is moving freely. We can see that there's a little bit of stick and return there, so we need to clean and lube this. Pretty much anything that looks like it has amber grease on it. Uh, needs to be cleaned and lubricated. Now I'm not going to go through the whole thing because this will take three, four hours of time that I do not have. However, we can lubricate the key points that need to move in order to get this working. In fact, a good rule of thumb on these is that if it looks like it should move, see if it moves freely. If it doesn't move freely, you need to take it apart and clean and lubricate it. If it does move freely, then you can probably ignore it. Like this part here, this doesn't feel sticky. It feels like I can just kind of move it with ease. So we can ignore the on and off pivot point, which is here. However, this thing here, which is attached to it, is very sticky. So I need to clean and lubricate that. Uh, Likewise, the switch for the on and off here, very sticky. See how it doesn't return even though it's supposed to under spring tension? It sticks. So the key points of lubrication on this are going to be this slide here, which you can't see because it's being obstructed by this. That slide, there's a pivot down here, and then there's another slide which is underneath here. You can't really see, but that guy right there. So we need to clean and loop that. But it's, it's stuff like that that's really important. And <clears throat> another fun thing is that you'll see a lot of pieces are riveted on here like this. And the key to getting those free is usually on the other side. And it's really hard to see, but there's an E-clip for this back up in here. And I don't think that I'll be able to fully disassemble this. Uh, the way that I would want it to do if, uh, oh that's great, the little wire just broke loose for the ground sheath in here, but that's okay, we'll fix that later. So at any rate, uh, the first thing that I want to focus on is the speed selector, and I'm going to see if I can prop this up in a position that you guys can see what's going on here. I don't know if I can or not, because again, we have limited camera movement today, it's just propped up. And uh, I want to try to make it so that you guys can see what I'm doing, but we'll see. Um, so, the first thing I want to do is address why this doesn't move up and down. And the reason why it doesn't is because this sleeve bearing here, this guy, gets sticky. And if I pull up on it, you can see it comes up, but it doesn't want to retract back down. So this shaft here needs to be cleaned and lubed, and the one underneath, 
if I can rotate it enough to see. I don't know if I can. Anyway, the, the under part of that, I don't know if you can see it right there. That's the under part of that bearing. Now, the time to take that fully apart and do it is substantial. But what we can do is clean it very heavily with Q-tips and alcohol. And then we can get the old grease off and the new grease on. I'm going to start with the top bearing. Let me grab my stuff here real quick. So just Q-tip and alcohol. I'm going to lift this up. If this is utterly frozen and you cannot move it at all, you'll need to heat this area with the uh, heat gun. Or you can try penetrating lube overnight, which works if you're patient. However, if you're in a hurry and you got a bunch of work to do in one day, then this works better. And before you let go of this, it's a good idea to oil it up. And I've got a syringe handy. And I'm trying to get an angle where you can see it. And just apply oil liberally along the shaft. And then in the top here. And then we're going to do the same thing. armor latch back on with uh, the one underneath which is directly opposite and this here we need to clean and lube. The reason why I'm supporting this with my hand is because I don't want the plastic uh, record clamping arm to get busted. Let's do this from an angle you can see. So this shaft bearing here you want to clean this up. It's already starting to move a lot better. And I'm going to grab it from the other side, pull it up so that I can expose more of this bearing, clean this all out, and then lubricate this. I'm just using Zoom Spout MO98, which is basically turbine oil, detergent free. That's looking pretty good. Another thing to check is the movement of this. This is a little stiff. So then the next thing to do is you want to relieve this spring here. Rotate it so you can see it a little better. You want to try to do that with the spring not flying into oblivion. That moves pretty freely. But I think actually what I want to do, push up on this a little bit, and you'll expose more sleeve bearing down here. If this is really sticky or frozen, you'll need to mark the position of this nut, remove it, and then you want to pop this E-clip loose here so that you can pull this whole assembly out. Uh, you may also need to, I don't think you do, no that just pushes up on it. You don't need to remove any of this collar up here. So I'm going to get another Q-tip, wet it with alcohol, and I'm going to do the top part here, push up on this a little bit, do the bottom part here, dry a little bit and then find my oiler that just disappeared <laughs> there it is and then we're going to liberally lubricate this and you want to try to inject it down into the point where this uh, sleeve comes out of this and then we'll do this again work it a bunch of times eBay says pay attention to me. 
you also want to see if this is free moving and if it isn't you want to put some oil on this I forget if there's an easier position for this to be in maybe there is well anyway this pivot should be free moving and so I'm going to pull down on it just a little bit and put some oil in here because this one's already moving I just want to help it out a lot here we go much better moves really easy now and then we can reattach the tension spring like this so now when we go to change our speed we can see that that's moving up and down now you want to put minimal stresses on this plastic because it's old and it will break while you're at it check for free movement of this this is your idler pivot arm this will freeze up in which case it's a bit of a chore to get to because you will have to remove this cam so again spring comes off e-clip comes off uh, this assembly pulls up this whole thing comes off and then there's an e-clip underneath there that if you pop that off you can push this down uh, and get it off and clean and lubricate it for now I am just going to put oil in here and it has to be completely free moving otherwise you won't get proper engagement of your idler wheel but right now that looks pretty good all right so uh, the next thing we're going to address is the cycling wheel now <clears throat> I'm not going to fully disassemble this because the effort to get to the clip on the other side of this uh, is a nightmare you have to take most of the arm apart and pull a lot of this mechanism off which is not fun uh, but regardless we need to get this unstuck because this is very sticky so you'll also see that the other impediment for this trying to this arm here uh, you'll need to take this e-clip off remove the spring so that you can get this kind of up and away a little bit this uh, activates the, the spindle thing here and that's pretty sticky too but we'll worry about that in a little bit we can kind of kill two birds with one stone with that one so I'm gonna remove this the spring will want to fly off so make sure your hands there to catch it a lot of tension under that one and then we can kind of move this up that will give us enough clearance to clean the sleeve underneath it and clean and re-oil this like I said we're not going to take this all apart that's a big time vampire as uh, Shango likes to say and I'm going to remove this clip which will allow me to get this up enough to where I can again clean and lubricate this so <clears throat> once I got it past the sticky point it actually moves pretty well so I'm going to tilt this up and hopefully you guys can see here underneath and so you want to clean all the oil and gunk off of this I'm going to use the other side to dry the alcohol off you can blow on it that'll help dry it off quicker and then take your oiler syringe and just apply oil to that See the e-clip to pop that off is right there I'm going to drizzle some oil down up in here uh, this little nub in here you want to lubricate that grease is probably better I'm just giving you an idea and then we'll also put 
oil up in here on the top down in that hole there and then just work it so that the oil has a chance to distribute on that bearing this roller here doesn't hurt to oil this either if it's already free moving if not free it up with a heat gun scrub it with a toothbrush and some uh, alcohol to clear the grease out and then re-oil it as well that has to be free moving and now we'll focus on this guy here that I've pulled up and again it's just a matter of getting as much of the old garbage out as you can I'm going to approach it from this side because I have better access on this side if you can see red amber grease down in there it's not clean yet you can get pretty close this one's a bit of a pain we'll clean the top portion too And then again, apply your oil to this bearing and to here. And then you want to work this up and down. If it's really sticky or dirty and you're starting to see grease come back up here, repeat the process. Because this has to be clean. You can't just leave that old grease there because what will happen is, is uh, it'll dry up again and get gross and stuck and then you'll have to do this all over again so you want to keep going we're just going to repeat it since we saw some grease show up there after we relubricated it and then again apply oil here and underneath and then we'll work this guy that's pretty free moving alright so that's the trigger for the spindle drop so we'll put the e-clip back on the cycling wheel or cycling cam I should say. Uh, on this one the wider part of the spring goes up top and we're gonna put this on here. Now we can see that the spindle still a little sticky. Actually that's just because I was it was resting on something. Uh, it doesn't hurt to clean this gunk off here and regrease that so we'll do that as well because I can see remnants of rubbing grease there any point where there's going to be a slide so down in here as well where this interacts and then I don't know if you can see that maybe you can yeah right up in here Clean this off. And then let me get some grease real quick and then we'll reapply some grease to those points. And I'm just using Lucas white lithium grease. nothing special you can get this at your auto parts store fairly inexpensive a giant tube of it will last you a very long long time alright so lift up real quick and you'll see that that now moves freely I'm gonna have to cut the video off and start another one since my uh, 20 minute limit per uh,
file is approaching. So hold on a second. All right. Let's see if this will cooperate. There we go. Okay, so we've got this lubricated, this lubricated, your speed selector, your spindle drop. This was another part that we assessed as being rather sticky. So we're going to pull this bit off here. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe the light's screwing with it. This E-clip comes off here. And since this is under spring tension, I'm just going to lift this up ever so slightly and move it downwards so it's ca caught on the uh, shaft here. And then we'll clean off the grease and lubricate it. Now you might ask yourself, where is it okay to use grease and where is it okay to use oil? Uh, typically speaking, I will use grease at points of high contact pressure with a lot of force against them uh, because a higher viscosity lubricant is better in those applications whereas parts that have very little force against them that are designed to move a lot I will typically have turbine oil there. I found that that tends to be the best guidelines for lubrication on these machines. That's better. Some of these you will need, I recommend hemostats. You can use needle nose pliers, but hemostats really work best for putting these little E-clip things back on. So on this, a point of high pressure would be where it mates with that area there. In fact, that's already got grease on it as is, so we're going to clean that off and then reapply some lithium grease to that point. I know this is really exciting, but you know, this is what you got to do. That's working so much better. Okay, let me toss my old Q-tips that are saturated with garbage. And then we'll add some lithium grease to that spot there. And I'm pushing on the lever that's underneath that you can't see it's here in order to get this up. You can manipulate it however you want. I just find this to be the easiest way to do this lever. That works pretty good. Uh, okay, so now that we've got that, the other key points. This is usually pretty free moving. That's true of this one too. I am going to put a little bit of grease down here. This spot typically doesn't need it. Okay, so we've got that down. The next part we want to look at is the linkage for the power switch. And you've got three, let me get the record clamping arm out of the way here. You've got three key points. One is here. One is here, and on occasion, you'll see this shaft here, this gets sticky. The one for the auto manual down here, this is a little sticky, it's a press fit, you just got to oil it. But these two out of the three points are very common to screw up. Um, you can kind of see how they interact with each other. I just triggered the latch, so I gotta figure out a way to get that undone. There we go. So these all have to be free moving. This here, this here. Um, this is also part of it too. That's your auto manual type thing. So, best way to approach that. 
I'm going to see if I can rotate this better so you can see it. Uh, if you don't have your solenoid here, this one's so much easier to get at. But because mine's the remote control set, I have the solenoid here to fight with. And I'm going to see if I can get this off of here without there being too much injury to myself and or the solenoid. It wants to come off. There we go. So there are two, I don't know if you can see them, there are two levers on top of each other. You need to pull each one up, clean all the grease out on both sides of the lever and the shaft. And realistically, I don't use grease on those because they need to be absolutely free moving. So I'm going to try to get this where you can see it. And it's under spring tension, so watch out. You can relieve the spring down here behind this plate here if you want to. So I'm going to remove those two. And then we're going to clean the grease out on both sides. I'm trying to see if I can... You can see that one down there. We're going to... That's the shaft that we need to get the old grease off of. And then you want to get the... I use hemostats to pull it up. You want to get the grease off of this side of this thing. And we'll worry about the grease on the other side of that linkage in just a moment. I'm going to put some oil on the shaft here and put the first one down. Assuming it will cooperate. There we go. And then the second one that's under spring tension. I'm going to clean the grease off of both sides here. Put a little dab of oil down here, and then again oil on top of this, and then move this back into position. Set it down like that. And then see if I can put this clip back on here without it flying off into oblivion. This is really where hemostats are useful because I have to slide this thing on here and then get it to latch into place and since I don't have much room to work this kinda sucks but believe me without the hemostats it's far worse There we go. All right. Now, you also will want to clean the grease off of this slide here. I don't know if you can see that. This guy here has got grease on it, too. You want to get that free and clear. And you can put new white lithium grease on there if you want to. Sometimes I'll oil it. Sometimes if it's really smooth and shiny, I'll just leave it be too much. You can lubricate this too, this little square hole here that interfaces with the latch. When this is sticky, this typically will not latch like it's doing there, so take note of that. If you're wondering why your turntable doesn't stay on, probably because that thing we just cleaned and lubed is sticky. Alright. So, pull this apart, clean and re-oil this. Doesn't hurt to dribble some oil down on this one as well.
If this whole shaft assembly here is frozen, like none of these want to move, you pull the knob off, there's an E-clip, and you can take them loose. Make sure to release these two before you do that so you don't bend these. And you can clean and relubricate that too. Doesn't happen very often, but on occasion you will see one that's very sticky or frozen up. All of these little annoying points add up to a functioning machine if they're all moving freely, so just keep aware of that. On occasion, you'll see this pivot here freeze up, and that's accessible, or accessible, yes, by the other side here. So, you pop this guy loose, and I'm going to clean and lube this anyways because it is a problem part on some machines, and I'm just going to pull it up so that you can see that exposed. Let me rotate this, so this bearing is exposed here, and we're going to clean the old gunk off of that. Shoot some oil down in there, and work it a bit. Another thing you may wish to lubricate. Hang on a second. Get this out of the way. Is this tract here? Doesn't hurt to put a little bit of grease in there just to save wear and tear on stuff. Because this pin will ride inside of here. here too if you want. Doesn't hurt it. Not crucial, but certainly doesn't hurt it. Okie dokie. So let's put that E-clip back on. Now that we've done that, check this for free movement. This is a little sticky, so we're going to pop that loose, clean and re-oil it. It's under a little bit of spring tension underneath, so don't pull it up too far, don't pull it all the way out. I'm just going to tilt it up, and get this out of the way. Tilt it up about like that, like if that's flat. Tilt it up a little bit like that, and then clean all the old dirty dirt and grease out from underneath the shaft here, as well as the metal underneath. And I hold it to make sure it doesn't pop out of place underneath. And we'll apply a little bit of oil to the shaft there, put that back down. Much better. Okie dokie. Now, let's focus on a little more intensive things to make sure they're moving correctly. One of which is stuff underneath the tone arm. This here should be free moving. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this part underneath here that's got grease on it, that you, I don't know if you can see that or not, but you should get that old sticky grease off of there. Because if that part sticks, you'll have problems with them to play, pick up and reset. I would just leave it dry, to be honest with you. I don't see, think there's a reason to have oil or grease there. And if you want to, you can, but... I've never had any difference of operation with or without lubrication in this tract. 
this one's pretty caked on there. So I'm actually going to take a knife and very carefully scrape it off. Yeah, maybe we will pull this up. I'm trying to get a good enough angle. You guys can see this. I lost my little screwdriver. Here we go. Take note of where this spring goes if you're going to pull this up to any length. Ah, and an eclip just flew off into oblivion. I heard it fly back into the store. All right. So I'm going to have to source another one of those. That's why you always keep your finger on stuff. That one was pretty sticky. You can work this up pretty far. I think almost to the point where you can get it off. So let me get Q-tip and it's hard to see, I guess. But this part underneath here, that's where you need to clean off all your old gunk. And I'm going to apply oil down there onto that. Now before you get too crazy, I'm going to pull a bunch of the cotton off of this so that it's nice and skinny. And I'm going to come down here through the top and try to clean as much of that garbage out of there as I can. You can see it's kind of yucky. Excuse me. Apply more oil down in there. And then we're just going to work it up and down to help distribute this until that's nice and free moving again. And the locating pin goes behind it like this. And now I need to find the E-clip or actually just replace the E-clip that was sitting there. That's why you always got to keep your finger on stuff in case it decides to fly away. Thankfully I've got a pretty broad selection of these because this stuff does happen. I'm trying to gauge the size there. Bear with me a moment. I love it when people call like two hours before I'm actually open to the public, thinking that someone's just going to be here to answer the phone for them. They're going to be solely disappointed either that. It's either going to be a solicitation for something or somebody just wants to be heard and leave a message. Eh, this might be a little too small. Worst comes to worst, I'll show you how to do it without the e-clip and just using a piece of wire. Let's see if they leave a message. This looks like it's a little bit closer size. I may have to crimp it down a little bit. Yeah, just a little. It's pretty close. I want it to be snug on there, though. Again, hemostats to the rescue. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this down a little bit. Keeping my finger on it so it hopefully does not fly away again. It's trying to. There we go. That's nice and free moving. Make sure this piece here is free moving. It's a press fit so it doesn't hurt to dribble some oil down in there just to keep it happy. And then there's this thing here which I think is part of the cycling wheel. Yeah. Alright, 
I'm just checking to see if all this stuff here is moving freely underneath. So far, so good. All right, this is the time to check stuff, other things that are intended to move freely. For the most part, I think we're good though. This here needs to move freely. This whole assembly here, which is a pivot on this thing here, needs to move freely. All right. So most of the scary stuff we're good to go on. Uh, we need to pay attention to this, but I also need to start a new video because, again, I'm on my 20-minute limit, so hold on. All right. So we need to take care of a couple things. This bearing here, which is what the cycling wheel attaches to, needs lubrication. This one's a little sticky. And I'm going to dribble some oil down in here. And then I'm going to flip it up. I don't know if you can see. See, 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 see. It's hard to see. Put some oil down in there and then work it up and down to distribute the oil. That's got to be happy. And then this pivot here. You've got this clip here, which is part of the pivot. The other one's here, which I believe the clip is underneath. I don't remember how accessible it is. We'll find out in a moment. And let me just refresh my memory here. That is like not at all accessible. All right, this could be fun. So I'm kind of thinking the way we're going to have to do this is, is there's an E-clip right here that we have to take off. This is fixed. And then the shaft with the pivot should come out, leaving the gear in there. It's been a while since I've done one of these. So let me get that loose and then we'll discover it together. Oh yeah. Uh, this thing here, this spring-loaded thingamachigas here, has to move. I forget, that's a pretty tough spring. Looks like it, it, it does move, so maybe I'll just leave that one be. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. We'll address that after we're done with this. Okay. Let's see if my theory is correct. Looks like something's coming up on the other side. Yep, that's kind of how I thought it was going to happen. So this comes out, you need to clean and lubricate this. And also the shaft of the gear. You don't ever want that little plastic gear to freeze up because if it does, it will crumble and, and uh, break and then you won't have any automatic cycling. So it's really important to keep that happy. So I'm just going to clean all the gunk off this. If you want to put grease in these gears, you're welcome to. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. I'm going to hold the gear while I clean the gunk out of the shaft. Clean this off. clean this off too just because it's a good idea to do it while you got it apart also clean the mating surfaces of that shaft off here and then we'll apply some oil to this and inside of here and on here And then you're going to have to move these slightly to line them up, but it's not impossible. Trying to get this all meshed back together is always the fun part. attach the small one first 
so that way when I go to flip it over to put the other one on it doesn't creep out Right. So that's pretty good there. Now you'll see that there's a bit of a gap. Uh, don't worry about that, but you will have to relieve that gap by installing the cycling wheel uh, so that the gears mesh properly. Okay. So we're looking pretty good here, nice and free moving. So now is a good time to check your cycling mechanism and see if you did anything uh, to make this work better. And the way that we're going to do that is, is I'm actually going to attach the cycling wheel. And to take the slack out of that gear down there, I'm going to push up on it with a screwdriver underneath. And I'm going to attach the idler wheel best possible. And you want to try to get it so that the idler wheel rests against the 45 tier of the motor. It's the second largest one. The largest one is 78. The next largest one is 45. That's where you want to set it. And then I'm going to tighten these down. And the cycling wheel on these turns clockwise. tighten this and the reason why we're going to try it by hand first is to identify anything any problems with jamming or something like that that could be a detriment so I'm going to go ahead and say reject and turn the thing manually I can hear things moving and I just saw the spindle trigger. The arm comes out. It's defaulting to the 45 position because there was no trigger here. And the cycling wheel releases. That's great. So let's move it over to the end of play trip here. And then I'm going to trigger that like the cycling Paul would which triggers the wheel. Let's see if it comes back. Not coming all the way back. Interesting. Okay, so it's not initiating the end of play cycle, it's doing the repeat. What happens if we do stop? Let's just place it in some arbitrary position. Let's see if it returns and shuts off. Nope. So no matter what the cycle is, the machine wants to keep playing. Just out of curiosity, let's see if it will with input from the record size selector over here if it will find the 12 inch position. So I'm going to watch for when the spindle triggers and I'm going to very soon after press the diameter selector size like this. And it does set down in the 12 inch position so that part works. That's good. Let's go ahead and trigger. Oh, 
That's why it's not shutting off, because this didn't fully go down. Silly me. Let's go ahead and trigger it. It's probably not resetting because I've got it resting on the towel. All right, let's get this thing up in the air because I'm sure there's stuff underneath that's interfering with this. I just got some simple boxes that we can prop this thing up on. Let's see if we get the mechanism off the towel if it will behave differently. So let's go ahead. Well, first let's just try the manual stop. Now that everything's down. It's trying to return. Something else is sticky in there. All right. Arms moving freely, that's good. Let's lift this up to the start. Drops the record. Size selection. trigger. It's like if I help it, that's a little sticky, isn't it? off just really briefly and yeah, get some lubricant underneath this. That's your on and off switch which I noticed was a little sluggish. this up real quick. So obviously we have a problem with it initiating the shutoff portion. Let me turn the ringer off real quick. That way at least we won't have to listen to it. Alright, so the thing that we want to look at as far as the initiation of the end of cycle interfaces with the record clamp arm. It's this guy here. So when it comes down all the way, it pushes on this lever, which we can see moves freely. There's also this wire from the tone arm that's interfering with it. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's actually it and it's just providing or preventing the thing from fully going downward. Well anyway, uh, when this changes positions it affects this mechanism here which either initiates the new drop and checks the record size selector or it turns the machine off. So that moves freely. Probably wouldn't hurt to clean the grease off of this. There's a little bit left on there.
That's a little sticky. All right, so that interfaces with this lever down here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get it. This lever here that we messed with earlier, they rub up against each other. So let's make sure we remove all the old grease from that. There's very light pressure there. This part itself is pretty free moving. So I think I'll actually just leave that dry. sure again there's a little bit of old grease up in here don't want that to stick to anything and then it's probably a good idea it's really hard to see underneath here but anyway, the bottom part of the record shaft selector here, which is buried inside, you want to clean this off and relubricate it. This needs to be absolutely free moving and fully descend in order to initiate the shutoff cycle. So I'm going to re oil this, get the bottom side all cleaned and oiled up. Then we'll do the top side. And then we'll check the uh, cycling again and see if that has improved our situation any. Not sure why it's not fully returning either. We need to look at that. Crazy, huh? Let me get a new fresh Q-tip and clean that thing off. and oil this up. Okay, let's try our cycle again. Lifts up. Drops the record. 12 inch spot there that I triggered. that it is no more records up top let's trigger the end of play cycle here nope still doesn't fully return but it does shut off I saw the switch move there Okay, so this is where things start to get tricky because we have to figure out why the arm isn't fully returning. And there's stuff that causes that return to happen. And we need to see what grabs the arm to bring it back during a return cycle or shutoff cycle. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to display this on camera. This is going to be tricky. And if I turn it, okay. So the full cycling cam has to go counterclockwise. So it begins.
probably something wrong in a clutch or something like that. And for some reason it will not cycle upside down. That's uh, kind of funny. All right. Got to uh, do another shoot here. We're approaching our 20 minute mark. All right. So, I'm not sure if I can show what's going on here on camera. This is the business end of what's happening during a return cycle. It does lift up the arm. So right now, it should be starting to retract. So I'm trying to see what's responsible for that. One would think that this here, that's your main point of movement. Let's see what all this interface is with. That's our muting switch. Not really too concerned about that. That doesn't do a whole lot much else. I'm just trying to watch it here and see what causes it to be pushed back. Okay, so this part, this part up in here, I don't know if this is because it's under the influence of the clutch, but what is horrifically sticky. So let's actually reset the cam and see if that part is still sticky. That could just be because the return cycle has the clutch engaged and it makes it sticky. It's hard to tell. But it doesn't appear to be though. It appears that that's free moving when the clutch is not grabbing it. Alright, so that's probably not it. When it cues up, the clutch engages. And we have to see what's responsible for pushing that arm back. So far, I'm just not seeing it. Well, there it worked. Or it's trying to, at least. I'm trying to figure out what pushes that there. all part of how you screw around with this thing until you find what works. And it brought it back that time, but then it's not initiating the shutoff cycle. Well, that's because that didn't get pushed all the way down. And that cable's still getting in the way. I need to reroute that. All right, so stop. And it's going to lift. Brings the arm back at least this time. And it's jamming on something. Not sure what. Maybe the cycle didn't initiate. Yeah, that's a little slow to move. Herky jerky. 
and then it brings the arm out again. All right, so something's going on here. This was like my greatest fear was having to take all this apart, but I think I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm just going to hose the thing down with some fader lube and all of the crucial joints, and then work it a bit and let it do its thing. We are what approaching an hour and a half, something like that. So let's make sure all those are free moving. That's free moving. That record size selector is free moving. Add some lubrication to the bearings down in here for the end of play trip fall or uh, end of play cycling trip with the record holding arm there. And then run this through a couple motions. See, and then this keeps malfunctioning too. Hmm. Interesting. Thought I took care of that guy. No, that looks okay actually. I will give it a little dab of oil there because it is dry. Yeah, the majority of this work is just discovering what's not working as it should. And I think that's the hardest part of these. That and I'm also having to contend with the fact that somebody's messed with the tone arm wire and it's getting caught up in things and it shouldn't. The original routing of that wouldn't have ever put anything near it. See, now it's returning. I got that wire out of the way. But will it shut off? Yes, it will. Okay, so there was, it's all timing on these, and so this was slightly sticky. The fader lube loosened it up a lot. I'll probably just saturate this with a fader lube to make it happy and check it again after a couple days. So now we could do the real test which is uh, having it work under its own power. That's the fun part, having it work under its own power. So I'm going to set this up on the boxes. And it's just going to kind of teeter there. And then I'm going to grab my cheater cord okay hook this guy up and unlatch this and let's start the cycle and see what happens should be in shutoff mode right now because the arm's down. Wonderful. 
So let's go ahead and try it. Trigger the cycle. Yep. Wonderful. And let's come over here. And trigger it. Fantastic. So just for grins and giggles, I'm not going to put the main idler on yet. I'm just going to see if it will drop a record. And if it does, great. So let's see if it will. Drop points good. Excellent. So we'll just pretend like it's over here. Trigger it. Most excellent. Motor shuts off and everything. All right. So, what a pain, huh? So all of that horrendous work, trial and error, and we finally got a machine that actually works. It cycles. I can't say works because we haven't done the rest of the BS yet. Let me flip this over. But as you can see, when I hit reject, will drop a record and it will initiate the stop cycle so really happy about that one so there you go that is the basic service as I pointed out earlier I'd have to take apart everything underneath that arm in order to get everything perfect but thankfully, the fader lube does a great job of breaking up the old grease. And after it's all flushed out, I uh, vigorously oiled the sleeve bearings in that area. And this thing's all about timing. It's all got to happen at the right time intervals for each piece. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. In the next part, we'll work on getting a cartridge into the tone arm, uh, getting the platter bearing and everything cinched up, getting the idler wheel ready to use, and hopefully it's good enough to use. And I'm going to assume that this cartridge is pretty dead, so we'll go through the aspects of perhaps installing a cartridge too, just depending on how quickly we go with all this. But anyways, hope this was educational, hope this is useful to you. Uh, more stuff to come.